Before the scientific revolution, most scientific knowledge in the ancient world, or at least in Europe, was based on the teachings of various Greek and Roman scientists and philosophers, like Aristotle, Ptolemy, and Galen, who all had one thing in common. They were kind of wrong about everything. Back then, the scientific method was a long way from being invented, so basically everything that made sense was good enough. Of course, the most well-known instance of this is with Ptolemy's geocentric model of the solar system, which described the Earth as one single giant stationary sphere in the middle of the universe, of which everything else orbited. The other planets, the sun, the stars, everything. This model of the heavens was basically the general model throughout the ancient world, and was actually debunked by many different scientists, but the only one of them people actually seemed to have listened to was Nicolaus Copernicus and his heliocentric model of the solar system. You know, for being… right. Well, it was actually full of tiny flaws that made the calculations infeasible, but nothing that couldn't be fixed up by later scientists. Copernicus, and many other astronomers at the time, made many revolutionary discoveries in the field, and they were all rewarded for their contributions to human civilization by… being arrested for heresy. The church, all churches, Catholic and Protestant, didn't really like the idea of Earth not being the center of everything, because, I mean, if they were wrong about their place in the universe, what else could they be wrong about? Galileo was sentenced to house arrest, and Copernicus actually got away with it, but only by dying just after his book on the revolutions of the heavenly spheres was published in 1543. Giordano Bruno, of course, also argued that the other stars in the sky were no different from our sun, or, well, relatively speaking, and could thus have their own planets, possibly even with their own life forms. So, arguing that this would mean that humanity wasn't the pinnacle of creation, the church of course burned him at the stake. So, if these early astronomers had such a hard time convincing their peers of this new model, what eventually changed? Basically, overwhelming evidence. After Copernicus published his book, other astronomers discovered more arguments in favor of the heliocentric model. For one, Galileo discovered that Jupiter had at least four different moons of its own, at least four, which orbited it without a care in the universe for whether or not Earth existed. The phases of Venus were also discovered to have had nothing to do with the Earth, but everything to do with the Sun. Eventually, opposition to the heliocentric model started to fade, with heliocentric works finally starting to be unbanned in the Church by 1758, as the Church's influence was also starting to fade with the Enlightenment. So, even if you don't care much about space, why should you care about all this? Well, first off, why don't you care about space? Second, while the scientific revolution might not have been a revolution in the traditional sense, it did still change how we think about the world. And while this may not have been something initially known about by the common person, the new knowledge brought on by the series of events did eventually come down to the common person. Nowadays, not only do we all know about how the solar system works, no one would even think to keep that knowledge from us. At least, no one whose theories actually work out. It wasn't just math, physics, and astronomy that saw significant advancements during this time though, but things like biology and chemistry. This way of thinking, of calling the authority of past sources and high officials into question, would start to become the dominant way of thinking around the world for the next few hundred years, indirectly starting many numerous revolutions all across the planet. <laughs>